Welcome to your crash course in cross-cutting concepts. The cross-cutting concepts are listed in NGSS in an order of complexity, from the simplest to grasp all the way up to the most complex. Now in early elementary we're mostly going to be focusing on the top part of the row, slowly working our way downwards, and we really don't get to stability and change until kind of high school. Noticing trends and patterns is really the foundation of science, and so a lot of elementary school focuses on recording patterns in detail. Now the middle school in NGSS is going to go on to explain the patterns, but it's going to assume that students have experience with the phenomenon. In other words, students need to describe seasonal patterns in grade 5, uh, but they don't really explain what causes the seasons in terms of Earth's orbit and tilt until middle school, but they do need to have that knowledge and background experience with the phenomena and with seeing the patterns in the phenomena that the middle school teacher can really tie together. Now patterns usually give us clues about what caused things to happen, so cause and effect. In an early elementary, the cause and effect cross-cutting concept takes the form when I did something, something else happened. It's kind of correlational. But as we move towards middle school, we're starting to look towards the mechanisms. What mechanism connects the cause to the effect? How did it happen? And upper elementary is a transition and a bridge between the two. Scale, proportion, and quantity are really three related ideas. There's the idea of measuring things, and that's quantity. As students are moving from early elementary to upper elementary, they're, they're starting to measure and quantify more of the patterns that they see. So that's a progression within the NGSS. The next is about noticing correlations and proportional relationships. We don't talk about that as much in elementary school. The last concept involves scale, and what you see at the naked eye doesn't tell you the whole picture. You might need to zoom in to the microscopic level, or zoom out to see the big picture. And NGSS is intentionally sequenced so that the K2 material is all at a tangible everyday life scale of self, school, and community. Uh, middle school begins to delve into microscopic and global issues, and again, upper elementary is at a transition between these two levels. Systems are really a way of thinking, a way of thinking about one little piece of the world at a time because the universe is so vast we can't think about it all at once. So what we do is we draw a boundary or a box around one little section of it and think about what's going on in there and call that a system. Now matter and energy can come in and out of that boundary and then inside the boundary that system has parts that all interact with one another. Now, Everything in the universe can be thought as a system. Of course, you've heard these words body system, ecosystem, earth systems, engineered systems, uh, but really any object you can think of as a system unto itself, uh, and any community can be thought of as a system. This is a very broad concept that can be applied at a very wide range of scales. Now, middle school students are going to focus on how systems are actually made up of smaller subsystems, but we're not really there yet in elementary. Most changes in the universe are caused by an exchange of energy or the movement of matter. Now they need to be able to track where the matter came from and where it's going to go next. We want them to learn to ask the question, what was the energy source that caused the change that I'm seeing? Now admittedly in elementary school the focus is much more on matter than it is on energy, and that's because it, the matter is obviously more tangible, but students do begin to discuss changes in terms of energy in grades 4 and 5. Structure and function is a phrase that's used in a lot of biology classes, but it actually applies to all types of science. And it really boils down to, why is a particular object a specific shape? Now in life science and engineering, each part usually serves a specific purpose, and the shape or structure of that part helps us accomplish that purpose. But in physical science and earth and space science, we look at this concept of structure and function a little bit differently. Here the shape of an object is actually evidence of how that object formed or of the processes that are currently shaping it. Stability and change really boils down to sometimes things change and sometimes they stay the same. Now this cross-cutting concept is really among the most advanced and it's really developed in high school. They deal with concepts of equilibrium, feedback mechanisms, and homeostasis. In elementary school, however, students are just focusing on noticing that some events are slow while others are fast. 